Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am once again diving into the world of Stable Diffusion. Why? Because I'm going to show you how to create videos which look a little bit like this. There we go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? How did I do it? Well, we're doing batch image to image processing, basically. So we take an original video, which looks like this, and then we turn it into whatever we want in that particular example, anime. So I'm going to be doing much the same thing in this example video, but we're going to be using this one instead, a woman in a yoga pose. All right, so let's have a quick look at my environment, just so you know what all these various things are. Now, of course, I'm using the automatic 11.11 web UE version. Links are down in the description. If you want to click on those and download and install exactly the same thing that I have, then you can do that. I'm using the Ubuntu 22.04 operating system with an NVIDIA GPU and Python environments are managed by Anaconda. There in the description. Once again, click on that link. You can download it and install it on Linux or Windows. Now, of course, you'll need a video as well. I've already shown you the example videos I got there. And you'll need something to turn those videos into the frames because we're going to be processing each frame individually. Now, I'm using FFmpeg because it's quick and easy and free to install. So sudo apt install FFmpeg. There you go, you've got FFmpeg. Then you can run your FFmpeg command. In this example, I'm using the minus I flag to input. So that's my video name, video.mp4 or yoga or woman walking or whatever it is that you've got your video name as. I'm using a frame rate of 25 in this example. I'm also scaling it to 1920 by 1080 and I'm outputting the frames with a frame prefix and four digits. So if we have a look at the yoga example there, so there it's prefixed with the word frame and then 0001. So we've got four digits in there. So that gets us all the frames in order. We'll be processing those in a minute. OK, so here it is. We've got our image to image. And uh, what, what, what do we do here? What do we do here? All right, let's just drag a random frame in. There we go. We've dragged a random frame in. And now we need to press the interrogate button and that will tell us what is going on. So this says it's a woman sitting in a lotus position on a mat in a room with a plant in the corner of the room. All right, fair enough, that's that's pretty close. That's pretty close. So you can just take that, you copy that. Now down in the script at the bottom here, we've got this image to image alternative test. That's the one we're using. And we're gonna use that as the original prompt. Okay, so if we just run everything as is, we'll, we'll show you what that looks like. So that will process that, and it will turn that original prompt into this prompt, they're both up the top there, so it actually turns it into that. Okay, so first thing I need to do is change the scale. There we go. So I've got the scale that's roughly the same ratio as my video there. Click generate again. It'll give me something that's fairly similar, but out in the in the same ratio there. <laughs> and as you can see, it's not entirely the same. It's not entirely the same. That one's a little bit more similar. That's a little bit more similar, but still not entirely the same. So you will need to do a little bit of playing around with these prompts to get your input and output images exactly how you want them. And that's that's kind of the trick. That's kind of the trick here. So now I'm using 20 steps Euler A. Now the original version uses Euler. I'll just show you what it looks like with Euler. It is very similar if you don't use Euler A, but it, it adds a little bit more grain onto it. So I do like Euler A because it smooths everything out a bit. Um, you will, of course, also want a fixed seed. So I like to fix the seed in there. That helps it look a little bit more similar than everything else the entire time. Uh, I'm also using face restoration because that helps sort of balance the faces out a little bit. Uh, Denoising strength for this particular example, I'm setting to 0 0.36. So I'm scaling that right down. Mask Blur 4, that's actually in the in-painting one, so we're not we're not actually using that, but it does sort of output it on the text there. And the decode prompt, I've actually changed ever so slightly, ever so slightly. So here we go, we pop that in there. So I've, I've also added young, because if you just put woman in there, it's, it's a bit vague. 
it's a bit vague. It will change it each time to any sort of woman that it feels is quite good at the time. So it could be a, an, an old woman. It could be a woman with blonde hair. It could be a woman with red hair. So if you do a little bit of specificity, so here I'm saying it's a young Thai woman. Also the same with the clothing. That will change each time. So here instead I'm saying it's a plain beige top uh, and pants and they're sitting in the lotus position. All right. So if we do that now, it'll still be very, very similar, <laughs> but should hopefully look a little bit more like that original picture there. Now, what else have we got in here? So I've also changed the config scale to 1.1 and the decode steps to 36. So there we go. It's a, it's a little bit more similar. It's a little bit more like the original one. So here I've put 1.1. So it's not much of a change, but it does help us <laughs> slightly. And the decode steps entirely up to you. Uh, I've set that to, uh, where are we, 36. Basically, that makes it go a little bit quicker. Now, this is essentially going to be twice as, as slow as normal image to image because first you have to do the decode. So first it's going to do 36 steps of decode and then it's going to do the 20 steps of recode. So we've got at least 56 steps going on there. That's just why I'm dropping the decode steps simply to make it quicker. If we have a look at that, we can see that that image shouldn't change all that much even though I'm doing 36 decode steps instead of 50. There you go, there's barely no, any noticeable change there whatsoever, but it is a little bit faster because you're doing fewer steps. So play with those sliders until you get a sort of output that looks a little bit like the one that you want. All right, so now I'm changing this into an anime style. All right, so it's, it's like the original prompt, so I'm modifying the original prompt, but I'm saying, okay, so I've got a Thai woman in a plain white top and beige pants is sitting in the lotus position, which is the same sort of thing, uh, on a rug in her apartment. She's got short black hair, so that sort of limits the, the hair color changing all the time. And I'm trying to reduce the uh, the noise in the background there, and it's an anime art style. All right, so let's see what happens with that. And that changes it a little bit, but it's like, oh, what's what's going on there? All right, so that's the uh, the strength here, yeah? So here I've got config scale 20, so if I really ramp this config scale up to the maximum. I've got it allowable on this at the moment, which is 20. There you go. We can see it's more of an anime art style now. All right. So the next little trick is just to throw in a whole load of negative prompts as well. So these are things that you don't want to see in your output image. So I don't want it blurry. I don't want it blown out. I don't want it saturated. I don't want any speckles, noise, blotches or dust. I certainly don't want the maximalist art style. Basically it helps to get rid of a little bit of detail. There's the, the less detail you've got in the output, the less likely it's going to sort of flicker. So there we go. It's a little bit simpler. It's a little bit more flat than usual. And we've got that anime style. All right, so that's that's the look we're going for. Now, one thing to note with the image to image is every frame is different. And of course, every frame will create a different noise pattern when you go in reverse. So if we pick a different frame, so if we pick frame 27, for example, so it doesn't look like it's changed very much. But if we regenerate this one, we can see that it will, in fact, change a reasonable amount. <laughs> And this is why we get a lot of that flickering on the video. So you want to test with at least three or four frames, sort of pick one from the middle of the, and the beginning and the end, just to see how consistent your character is all the way through. So once you've got a fairly consistent style coming out, um, then you want to go over to the batch image to image option. So here I want to take these as my yoga frames. So I'm just going to copy that. And that's going to be my input directory and my output directory I've already created. Now, I've noticed that if you don't create the output directory, then it will go error. I can't save the file. So create the output directory first. For some reason, it doesn't create it for you, as far as I can see anyway. And then you are ready to generate. And that is basically it. Then you'll, you'll, get, your, uh, you'll get your video out at the end of that. Now, just before I click generate on there and uh, go through and generate all those frames, I'm going to show you some other things as well. <laughs> so if you put the denoising strength all the way up, so we're going to do it to about 76 in this instance, then you get a much cooler looking picture. <laughs> so you can sometimes get away with, like I showed you on that woman walking, that was with a strength of 76. Sometimes you can make it stay consistent with a really high 
uh, denoising strength. You can get some very good things out of there. But if you want it to stay very much like your original video, then drop the denoising strength. Now, of course, if you drop the denoising strength too low, if I do it to 0 0.1, then you'll see it doesn't actually change the video at all. And we've just got a little bit of glitching in there, really. So it, it's all about playing with the denoising strength. If you put the denoising strength up to one, so this is a maximum, then you'll get a very, very different uh, image altogether. So there, there is that. And if I was to say use a different frame and click generate on that, then we'll, we, we will once again get a completely different image. So you want these images to be about the same each time, otherwise you will get that massive flickering. So as you can see, it's fairly similar. It could work, it could work. Um, and in these output prompts, you might think, oh, right, I've got this fruit and, and stuff down here, so maybe I don't want that. Maybe I don't want fruit and I don't want vegetables in there. So you can play with the negative prompts to get this a little bit more stable little bit more stable but as you can see there now it's completely taken her face out so that's that's not really what we want is it that's not really what we want <laughs> so there you go on the batch image to image process you can do that just click generate then so we'll, we'll click generate now and this will start creating all of your video frames and uh, that will take quite some time that will take quite some time but eventually once it's done once it's done i'll just interrupt that now but once it's done you can do your ffmpeg create all your frames into a video and then they look like these examples here.